Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Today we are taking a shop day and we have decided we just received a new set of cut hubs. So what's a cut hub? It's a really cool chop saw stand. So we're ripping apart all of our old stuff and we're putting all the brand new stuff in. There's one feature on this new cut hub. I call it cut hub two uh, that you're gonna love. If you have a cut hub, you're probably gonna wanna upgrade. I know I have, but we'll go through the reasons why, but we're gonna actually do the whole entire setup. So we're gonna start by setting up the whole um, set of sawhorse tables and then the bars and then the elevation tables, everything. So thanks for watching today, guys. If you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified when we're putting out new content. All right, so the first thing we have to do is take these uh, shiny new sawhorses and unfold them and set them up in a row. We're going to actually do a dual chop saw setup. We're a little limited on depth because I've been stacking materials for future projects because of um, all the time delays that we've been having as far as getting product in. So we'll have to hopefully have enough space that we can get this done. So anyways, um, the first thing we're gonna do is just start setting up those saw horses and we'll go from there. All right, let's set up the saw horses. This time, um, I know there's a ruler on these. Let's set them up so like they're they make sense. Yeah. So they actually work, yeah. Okay. So this since this is our second cut up setup, we noticed on our first setup there's a couple things that we didn't do that we didn't notice or we didn't really pay attention to. One of them is that the cut hub actually has a ruler in the table. So it kind of helps you assume measurement and length if you set it up properly. The last one, we didn't really use that advantage because uh, we set them up backwards. So to set up the sawhorses, basically you just start opening the legs and then you gotta push in these tabs and they lock in place. There's actually four of those because there's four legs. Uh, each sawhorse has an adjustable leg as well. So for any uneven terrain, up to about eight inches, you can change the elevation of each leg. So we do that quite often as we're building. We're moving these things all over the place. Okay, that one's done. We'll roll it over. And you can see the ruler right here. So you wanna make sure those rulers make sense to you when you're looking at them the way you're cutting. All right, so now we have two of our saw horses open. We gotta put the rail, the bars, the rail bars in, uh, which are these things right here. And each rail tube has a locking mechanism that will lock in place on both sides. So you'll put them in, okay, so. So you kind of have to pay attention to where your your tab is so you know where the hole to put it in so that you can reach the hole okay there it is so that's locked in place so there's one there's two and there's also a couple different adjustments so if you want to have less distance in between your saw horses, which we like to do because we, we run a heavy chop saw, our main, our go-to is a DeWalt uh, 12 inch, right down here, compound slide miter saw. Uh, it's very heavy when we're adding two batteries to it. And then we also put a chop shop on it, which the wind takes back and forth and moves around quite a bit. So we like to have things tight if possible. So I'm gonna move this in to there and there. And then this one will come in. Don't get your glove caught. Okay, now that's locked in at the first one. All right guys, so the reason I'm so excited about this new cut hub setup is that the old one used to have these dials right here that would pinch onto the bars. Basically, the, the, the whole chop saw is relying on the weight of this one little part. And sometimes these would slip and then the whole cut hub system could come apart. Now we alleviated that by putting a couple squeeze clamps onto the bars and onto the plate. But eventually, as you can see right here, 
those parts come up missing. So unfortunately, then you have nothing really holding the chop saw down onto the cut hub. Now what they've done is they've developed a locking mechanism that's adjustable for tension. So when it locks down onto the bar, then it, it it's a cam lever lock. So then it cannot come apart. I'm pushing really hard on this up and it's not moving until you decide to move the, the, the lever. So that's very cool. Obviously these aren't set to height. You can see that right now. So we'll get to that in a minute. We're just gonna go ahead and start setting up, but I wanted to show you the difference the viable difference between the old cut -a hub setup and the new cut hub setup and why we're so excited about these new plates. I'm stoked because uh, this is going to just make things a lot easier for us. I'm 88 here. Yeah, this one's the same. Um, okay, so right now this is loose, but I'm going to go ahead and fit it onto the cut hub rails, right? And then we'll get it uh, tensioned up after that. So to do it, you just have to put your first rail on the tube like that and then this one sits on it and then that's when these tension devices come into play and you can you actually have a little bit of you can kind of tell where the sweet spot is on that now once this is locked down and it's tight and our chop saw is mounted, this is not gonna move. Right now it moves because this is all loose, but we'll, we're, gonna, we're gonna fix that in a minute. So what we have to do first is identify where our chop saw is and where we wanna mount it to our table, and then we gotta drill a few holes to be able to mount our table saw to it. So that's our next step. So CutHub includes a shim pack, so they tell you what you have to do is measure the saw height, which our saw is 3 and 5 eighths. Then it tells you what size shim to use on the back of the saw and on the front of the saw. So on our, on our first saw, we need to use an inch and an eighth shim on the back and one inch on the front, and that'll keep our saw one eighth inch higher than the table. All right, so that's what we got, those two shims. We've already adjusted one to height. It's locked down. Now we just gotta do this one here. Okay, I got this. Loosen it the other way. You gotta loosen it to tighten it. Okay. There you go. Isn't that nice? All right, so we have our chop saw mounted to our cut hub. It's looking good. We've got it all uh, locked down and everything. And we put those little spacers in there and lock down the rails underneath. And it gives us a little bit of height. So we're about an eighth inch above uh, all the way on the outside of the saw and against the fence. The reason you want that is if once you start your cut on your board, you don't want your board to go like this because it'll pinch the blade and bark the blade every time, burn your wood and ruin, ruin your blades. You kind of want the lumber to go this way just a little bit whenever you cut through it. So that's why they recommend you put an eighth inch high on your saws and that's what we're doing too because we know better. Um, we've had, we actually had one of these slip and fall once and we're like, why is this saw barking so much? And it's kind of dangerous because if you've ever had a, if you ever use a chop saw and you're cutting a piece of wood and maybe the wood's bowed and maybe it just like it's under tension it'll it'll pinch on the blade and blade pinch can be scary sometimes especially if it's severe 
and it'll stop the, the saw right in its tracks and everything will jump and you'll jump and your fingers will jump and uh, crisscross will make you jump, jump. Anyway, I guess what I'm saying is it's always better to have your saw a little bit higher than your outfeed and infeed tables. So just something to think about. All right, we've got uh, this saw locked down. And so the DeWalt workhorse, uh, the this is our 12 inch compound slide miter saw. This does 90, not 80%, 85% of our workload. And then we have this uh, seven and a quarter inch Metabo saw that we're gonna mount as well. This is our trim saw. It's more for finesse cuts. It's money cuts when we're, when we're cutting all of our PVC. It doesn't cut four by fours. It doesn't cut two, three and a half inches. It'll cut like up to two inches maybe. But most of our PVC materials are one inch and a half inch. So it's great for trim work. So now we're gonna lightly mount this one, get it to elevation, adjust it for, uh, so it's in a direct line with this saw and then we'll lock it down. Right. All right, so we have our second chop saw set to height, but we don't have it set to square. So it's still loose and it still moves around a little bit. So now what we're gonna do is put a straight edge between that saw and this saw and get them lined up and then we'll cinch it down. There's the only one in there. On yours or mine? On yours. Uh, you're still about a sixteenth off. More? Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks for watching today. I really appreciate it. Hey, man, hit that subscribe button. We're about to hit 25K. All right. Party. Don't forget to like our videos and leave a comment below. And thank you so much. If you learned a little bit about Cut Hub, don't, what am I forgetting? Comment, like, subscribe, something the else. Bell. Comment, like, subscribe, and something else. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day.